Uh, thank you for joining me today, everyone. And, and uh, again, uh, good time this week. Busy time, but good time with VPS and everything. But uh, that is now... The kids, some of the kids were saying, oh, can we have this every day? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we could, could, could. But uh, that'd be cool. Um, but welcome, everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue on. I welcome people at home as well um, with Hebrews 12. Um, I don't have any more handouts to the last handout, but I think Elliot, oh, Elliot, here, he... Here's the new handout that you need that we'll get to. So it's only a couple verses on the old handout. So if you don't have it, no big deal. No big deal, really. Uh, I could pass this around. Um, why don't we start? <clears throat> With a word of prayer, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for uh, being uh, the mediator to which uh, you have given to us, Jesus, uh, the one who uh, dies and rises and who forgives us and reconciles us to you, O oh Lord. Bless us this day in the comfort, knowing full well that by the gospel uh, you have fulfilled all things. Bless us in your word. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so... Uh, Yeah, I know, I reflect on things, you know, every birthday you have, and this year, not so much. I'm just like, yeah, I think I've hit the halfway point, so, uh, Which number? 40, 42, 42. <laughs> 42, but you know, I, I think for me, uh, that's a good, uh, uh, just wait, I know. I know, I know. Where, but where is it in the Bible that eighty-five years? Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I think you know, as I've seen in life, you know, eighty-five is that sweet spot based on people living and where they're at. And I think uh, that's kind of the number. I think that'd be cool to reach. But the Lord knows. Don't want to be too morbid, so <laughs> the Lord knows. Uh, but today, uh, as we continue on, verse. I think 15 and 16 right there, uh, we're talking about, uh, continuing talking about the race. Uh, and, and on this pilgrimage of faith, on this race, uh, we see in verse 12, not to have drooping hands or, 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 or weak knees, uh, but really run the race uh, with the feet of Christ. Uh, verse 14, to strive for peace with everyone uh, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So that holiness is what? It's not what we... Uh, build up to, but rather it is the holiness that God gives to us by his free gift of the gospel. You are holy. Uh, I know during uh, Bible story time yesterday, uh, Carrie was saying to the kids, you are the saints. We are all the saints. See, I was listening. Right? Um, I had games, so I was um, an out of shape sweaty mess. Anyways, but, <laughs> but uh, games are tough to think of, but I think the kids had fun. Anyways, I uh, tried to tie it into the stories all the time. But we are the saints. Uh, that is, we are holy. And how are you holy? A lot, of, a lot of people will say holiness is by your works. But according to scripture, holiness is the righteousness of Christ uh, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, right? So that holiness is that's how we, that's how we sh uh, strive or, or str trod on this road of faith. Uh, verse 15, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness spr springs up and causes trouble, and by it become defiled. So as a body of Christ, to, uh, to lift one another up, to encourage one another in the gospel, uh, that no root of bitterness may be a stumbling block. You know, how many times do people leave the church because they had a strained relationship with someone? It's because of that person. I just can't go there anymore. That person. And, and that root of bitterness is real. See, what's happening is what? The devil right there is doing what? He's tearing the people apart. And at the end of the day, taking our eyes away from the holiness of Christ and what he has done for us. Like That's the constant uh, distraction or we're majoring in the minors when it comes to uh, what our faith is in, in church and all these things. So, um, 
Okay, uh, verse 16, if someone could uh, read that for me today. Verse 16. Yes. Yes. And more of God's person who saw his birthright for a single meal. <laughs> yeah, that no one is uh, sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. Now, again, we know the story, right? Uh, you, you know, from uh, when we talk about Isaac and, and, and Jacob and Esau, of course. Uh, Jacob from the heel, very tricky he was, but yet... Uh, what does it say about Esau when he sold? It's like, it's like, it's like Elliot going to Abe saying, I'll give you a double-double if you give me your birthright. Okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how, I mean, in retro, I mean, in the moment for Esau, it might have sounded like he was working all day. You know, he was hungry. Oh, that makes sense. I'll give away my birthright. I mean, right, I'm hungry. Uh, but yet again, this is that, that, he, he brings up Esau as a point of a cautionary reminder of what, in our flesh, how reckless or how loose, sec, do not be sexually immoral or unholy like Esau. So there is that connection to the stumbling blocks in our life and, and how easily uh, our bellies become the, or our flesh becomes the, the what, you guys? It becomes the... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, like today in the, the sermon, right? Uh, we'll talk about the parable. I mean, Jesus is teaching about who he is and, and all these very good things. And some random guy says, you know, um, and it reminds me of like, kind of like, uh, so you're saying if I believe in God, I'll have all this gold, like this prosperity gospel, right? Like people are always like trying to search for their own, their own benefit out of this. Like if I believe in God, I will never get sick, I will have the gold mansion, and I'll have that yacht, and life will be good as I eat, drink, and be merry. And um, we see that covetousness, how reckless it can become in our lives. Yeah, I mean, th this, is, this is the, real, the reality of our flesh. And, and like Esau, uh, who sold his birthright, for that's a big deal. Birthright? You know, being the first, uh, having all the, what is it, as Jacob would receive it, the blessings, right? Um, that's a big deal. You don't just, not even Don would do that, right? Oh, Don would not do that. He would assess. Don would assess and bring out the, the pros and cons. And he would say, no, sorry, I would rather starve than, than give my birthday. So it depends. If it was a steak, ooh, I don't know. Anyways, but uh, so this is the recklessness of Esau. And, and, and again, uh, verse 17, as we read it right there. Lord, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with, the blessing with tears. All right. So, uh, again, um, it was too late, and afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. And, and it, it is what it is. And, and we see right here, uh, this is, again, the picture of, as the writer is calling out, uh, the, the nature of man. And as I always say, you know, uh, when we talk about the Word of God, it does bring the sword. It, 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 it shows us what we're dealing with. And when it comes to the nature of man, uh, clearly we see, like Esau, uh, uh, his, his recklessness. And, and that is, of course, because of his own sin. And, and basically what the writer is saying here is be on guard because no one is immune. As you run this race, this pilgrimage, um, here you'll see all these stumbling blocks. And there we are to run the race, not with our hands drooped or, the knee, or our knees weak, but on that path as we're looking forward to what is to come. And on that path, uh, here he shows us the reminder of, of definitely what can come in our covetous desires, right? And again, as we heard in the sermon this morning, um, what is it about covetousness that is so... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I know, not even, uh, da dangerous, not even more than dangerous. What is, uh, well, 
it's destructive. Destructive, okay. What is it about COVID? Like, we live in a world, especially in America here. I mean... Because we all like covetousness. Covetousness, right? Uh, that, that, that we are, you know... Um, And, it, it, and I said it during the sermon, like as a parent, you know, it's always so important to teach our children uh, the way of the faith. But yet at times when they look at us, let's say, for example, hypothetically speaking, uh, <laughs> you, know, why are, you know, why are mom and dad, um, you know, why are they talking about this so much? Why are they prioritizing this in life? Why is it, why are they, you know, why are they focusing on money or possessions or, or career or all these things? Well, I guess that's most important to me as well, because after all, they're talking about it and they're talking about covetousness. And, and, and we see that quick model of how that they can follow in that same mode. And this is what I'm talking about here. Be careful because no one is immune. Covetousness is like, why is it so alluring? Because it's, it's right here and right now. Like, I could grab hold of it and I can temporarily be what? Have you ever been to the Denver, the Denver Mint where they make coins? No. Oh, it's so cool. I mean, they, they, you see all that, you go through the factory and you see the pennies and dimes. You're like, okay, okay, that's great. Oh, I make pennies and dimes. There's no security guards there, right? But then when you see the bar of gold in the glass casing, there's like five security guards like looking without moving because, you know, you don't want any sudden movements or else we get tackled, you know? <laughs> like, but you look at that bar and you said, wow. Yeah, no, no free samples. Not even a flake, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, your human self says, boy, what I, what I could do with that. And my life would be so much easier if I just had that. And again, this is similar to Esau. Yeah, you about unholy living, about sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is, what's the nature of sexual immorality? It's of the flesh, right? It's all fleshly desires and how natural that is to us as sinners. So, so the, the writer is saying, be on guard. Look at what's really happening, right? I mean, that's why I always tell Abe, you know, whatever you do in life, if you make a lot of money, great. More opportunities to give, and to serve those around you, right? Not to amass grain houses and, and be um, uh, the top 50, no, top 50 riches. That's pretty, that's pretty high. I think Elon Musk is on there, right? Bill Gates, I'm I'm sure. Oprah. Oprah's on there, right? I don't know who, but you know. I don't keep track of that. I don't keep track of that stuff either. It's but, not relevant. <laughs> Bezos too. Uh, so, so again, this is uh, what we are up against, but... Uh, yet at the same time, as, as we continue on here, um, on your new handout, verse 18, if someone could read that. Yeah. <clears throat> Something that makes the whole story of Esau um, perhaps more depressing is I think he knew about the promise made to Jacob, well, to Isaac, Jacob, of uh, what was to come. Mm. And he was the oldest, therefore it would have been passed on to him. Mm -hmm. So not only is he, you know, when he, we talk about, kind of talk casually about uh, rejecting his birthright, he was rejecting the promise. Ultimately, ultimately. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, you know, I, I think that's, you know, when we talk about uh, the here and now, birthright, food, 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 right? Uh, and that can, food can be everything else in life. The, the covetous That's what I'm saying. Like, we're flesh. We're talking about like covetousness with, like you're saying, um, like big things. It's just millionaires. But we're talking about him as just a meal. We do the same thing. It's For sure. Something so simple. You know what I mean? I see on TV or, or you know what I mean? If I just had that. If I just had that shirt or if I just had that. You know what I mean? It's, and, and you obsess on it. you got to have it. You know? And, um, when really, do I really need it? No. But Adam and Eve, it was just a piece of fruit. Yeah. 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 You wanted it. You, you desire it so much that you're willing to give up. Uh, it's like continuously putting something into your cart on Amazon. And then if you do it, yeah, 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 yeah. I do it all the time. I do it. I don't time. really have it. Like, what do I have? I got all these things saved in my cart. And I'm like, what am I going to these things for later? That's right. That's right. So, so again, you know, there is that... Uh, 
you know, there, there is that covetousness and that recklessness in our sin. And this is what we're to be, to be aware of as we live out our life of faith. Um, yeah, and that's why I didn't put it in my sermon. I took it out in the morning. I do my pregame, you know, in the morning with two cups of coffee. But it's just kind of my pregame. It's always been it. But, uh, but yeah, you know, when, when, when I asked Nancy, um, how's, your, how's your life going? Um, she could say what? She could say, oh, it's good, you know, I have this happening, I have that happening, you know, my baking couch full, I, you know, I have a roof over my head and all these things. Those are all good and great. But, but again, at the end of the day, what is good is that should be your answer would be, it's great because I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And in this world, a lot of people just kind of equate goodness with their circumstances and what they have in their material kind of feast, right? Uh, when in fact, no, I, like, when we talk about giving, right? Uh, I, I love giving because it does free me from my own covetousness. Like, in this life of faith, it's, it's great to give because there we rest upon, that's right, God does give me everything. Like, there's no compartment where it's like, mine. <laughs> like, this is my, pl no, it's, it's a realization in this life of faith that everything we have, we are content. We sing that hymn number 730 at the end, what is this world to me? If you look at those words, uh, I mean, they, they speak clearly about uh, all the world's vaunted pleasures and, 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 and how we are content in Christ Jesus, our health, our life, our wealth, all this thing is always about Jesus. And, and that's key. Ecclesiastes. Yeah. Uh, Sol Solomon sounds like he's about to take a razor blade to his wrist. Vanity. That's right. So he has, he has, he has everything he's fulfilled, everything covetousness could um, want. You have to wonder what he, what he was thinking when he had 799 wives and he, needed, and he wanted the 800. That was called covetousness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the heck was he thinking? I'm sure as heck didn't bring him any happiness. You would have thought he'd have quit it. Um, all right, on that note, uh, let, let's continue. Uh, and this is a continuation of the next section right here, if you look here in the text, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. No. So as they are on this uh, pilgrimage of faith, now the writer brings up what, how the Old Testament was with, the Mount, with Mount Sinai and, and how it had changed as Jesus came into the picture. And, and this is... Very important because when we talk about our life of faith, we're not stuck at Mount Sinai. Does that make sense? We're not stuck at Mount Sinai wondering, like the Israelites, we're, we're post Mount Sinai in a sense of what? That Jesus has come to fulfill the law. He has come and has given us uh, the gift of forgiveness. And, and here the writer does a great job of really showing pre and post and, and what that means for the faithful as we run the race. Okay, so very important. Verse, verse 18, if someone could read that for me. Verse 18. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and a storm. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, for you have not come, right? Not you have come, but you have not come to a mountain. Yeah. No, no, you said that. I'm just trying to emphasize uh, that. <laughs> it's been a long week, I know. Trust me. BBS, it was fun. Um, but as you look at your handout, we see all these uh, excerpts uh, from Exodus. And these are all going back to Mount Sinai, right? Uh, we see in Exodus 19, uh, 16 and 19 uh, on the Old Testament account. Uh, now... Uh, and also 20, 18 to 21. But now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire and the whole mountain trembled greatly, right? This is the presence of God. When, when they are near the presence of God, they were at the, at the um, what's the word? At the, um, yeah, sorry, near the mountain, right? Uh, but there they, they trembled, right? Uh, we see right there in Exodus 19, thunder and flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid. Now, this in verse 18, it says, for you have not come, as Marjorie read. 
right? Uh, to a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and tempest, that wild, violent storm, right? Because that was a picture of, of what? Of being of great fear and terror, being in the presence of God, right? That's, I mean, when you're... You know who had the great idea? Let's make the gold Bible uh, and that will make God happy. Well, yeah, it would make them happy, or so they thought, right? And uh, again, Aaron, Aaron and crew, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but again, the writer is showing us what here? About, uh, he's showing us the law. He's showing us how, it, you know, as, they, as God was in his holy presence, no one in this world, because we are sinners in that presence, uh, would not be, what? Fearful and trembling. Right? This is a reality. So, but again, the writer says what? For you have not come. This is not where you're positioned. Um, and we'll see that later what Christ would deliver them. Right? Um, and again, uh, I can't imagine the trumpets blaring and the, the, the tempest, the storm, the blazing fire and darkness. Um, what were they to do? And, and Moses was called, or of course, to go up. Uh, but, but even him, as we talk about here, would also tremble, right? Uh, it says right there, uh, okay, sorry, I should read Exodus 20, 21. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Uh, verse 19, if someone could read that, verse 19. To a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words, that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them. Okay. So the trumpet sound, and again, uh, would announce the coming of the Lord, Exodus 19.13. Yet in the glory of God, the people trembled as they wanted Moses to be their... They were, they were so afraid that they wanted Moses to be the mediator. So in Exodus 20, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Right? And Moses would go on saying, do not fear. Right? This is the Lord testing you and all these things. But, but again, mediator, when we go from Moses, uh, and, you know, from Moses to Jesus, how Jesus is the eternal mediator for us, reconciling us to God, uh, we're not there. Right? It says, again, going back, to, I can't emphasize, for you have not come to this place. Right? Because you have the mediator, and that's Jesus. See, this is what shapes you, you guys is the gospel, right? If, if we're stuck in Mount Sinai without looking forward to what is to come for the Israelites and for us, if it's without Jesus, we are trembling in a sense of terrified consciences that even though we type in or we punch in the calculated uh, algorithm for salvation, uh, we will still come up empty with the E sign on the calculator. Is that so simple? The E, you know, the error sign? Does that still come up on the case? Yeah, like, we'll never get there, right? And here we see that picture of, you're not here. This is what it was. And now with Christ, he has turned everything over for you, right? And that is why right now, as I said in the sermon, you have eternal life. You're looking forward not only to what is to come, but what you have right now. Does that make sense? Like, you have it right now. <laughs> You have it. It's yours right now. You have the joyous life. But you're looking forward to that ultimate fulfillment. But you have it now, right? Faith. Yes, uh, faith in his word. And you might, Miga might say, or Marjorie, or, or even Dave Bovey might say, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, how, how, how can you say that when my life has so many blips and so many two steps, one step forward, two step back moments. It's di life is difficult. Well, it is. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You, I absolutely agree. Life is, there are moments where it's, ooh, trials and suffering are very real, but we're not on this side of the mountain. Does that make sense? Like we are on, uh, the, we are on, we'll talk about uh, Mount Zion later, but we are, uh, we are delivered by the work of Christ and no one can take that away from you, Right? Um, I know you know that my pops um, is, is still in the hospital, and again, um, I know my mother listens to all these things. She's, you know, she's always listening. But anyways, um, she knows everything about our church, by the way, because of all the things she listens to. She's like, oh, how's Jeff? And how's... I'm like, anyways. Oh, now she knows. Anyways. Uh, but, uh, she keeps, she keeps track. Uh, she's that Happy mother. Happy birthday to your mom. Happy 
birthed she birthed me day. in Bellflower. <laughs> birthed me in Bellflower, Kaiser Permanente, right there near Norwalk. I know when I say 605, people here are like, where's that? I'm like, you know, 605. No, 5, 605. You, we know 605, right? Yeah. Do we know 605 here? 91. 91 22. Yeah. 405. 57. Yeah. 210. Yeah, more Pasadena, Duarte area. But anyways, uh, but uh, yeah, Bellflower. That was, was good times. Um, <laughs> good times. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, but, but, but anyways, uh, through all things, you know, you know, you know, as I see my dad, you know, uh, anything can happen right now, uh, but he's ready to go. And I think Janelle too, uh, she's ready to go. Um, and I, I don't know, I, it's not too privy of a conversation, but, uh, uh, not too privy. She's so pastor, you know. I'm ready. I'm good. I'm. She's at peace. I mean, yeah, she's at peace. She's like, I'm at peace. I, I know I'm breaking down, but it's Jesus. And I'm like, that's right. You know, and that's what this side of the mountain's all about. Do, do, do you see that? You, you're not on this side where you're fearing, wondering what's going to happen. Right? You are already there. And that's the peace that this world cannot give you, right? I mean, trust me, uh, we're all going to face that time, but... In that pilgrimage of faith, we're always preparing for that time. And how do we prepare? Not by our work, saying, look, God, what I've done for you, but in what Christ has done for you. Hearing the gospel, receiving his gifts, and saying, that's right. I am at peace. Like, I'm ready to go. Like, you know, I was in an airplane the other day, and I'm like sitting down in the airplane seat, and I'm, I'm always thinking spiritually, you know, so I'm like, oh, is this what it's like? Wait for the intercom. The pilot says, all right. We're time for takeoff. I'm like, that's right. We're time. It's ready to go home. It's ready to go home. And, and that's how it is with Jesus as he, as he pilots us um, um, uh, to our heavenly home. And this is the picture of what it means to be on this side of the mountain, right? But the writer really brings us back to that side. This is what it once was. Remember, the, the law is given for our own good, but it is not the law that saves us. It's always pointing to eventually to what? The word made flesh, Jesus Christ, the gospel, right? So, so we see this side of the mountain, and man, it is treacherous. Just imagine being in Israel, being at the foot of this mountain and saying, not dude, <laughs> but like, whoa, the presence of God, darkness in, in his thickness as he's hiding there, because he knows if anyone sees him, they are, they are to be put to death. Right, as the Bible says, right? So he hid himself in the thickness of darkness, all these sounds, thunder, tempest, and all these things. And that was very, uh, uh, what's the word? Very trembling for them. Um, and this is what the writer is really trying to build up. Okay, verse 20, verse 20, if so, could read that. Verse 20. Because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. Yeah, e even the animal. Right? So you see the presence of God here uh, as we see um, the referent to Exodus 19, 12. Um, and you shall set limits for the people all around saying, take care, do not go up to the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. That is, as sinners, we are unable to approach God by our own way. I can't make, I can't ascend to God like Gnosticism, we talked about that before, about our special revelations with God. I, I can't just bring out the Home Depot ladder in the spiritual section, Ways to Salvation, and buy one for 19.95 in Simi Valley. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> or Tower of Babel. I can't do that, right? Uh, and here we see uh, that, we can't, that they couldn't do that either, lest they be destroyed. Okay, uh, verse 21. Verse 21. All right, even Moses, right? The mediator, he's still a sinner, right? He's not some superhero. He, he's still a human being who uh, saw the burning bush, right? Uh, who was called up <laughs> to this mount 
uh, to receive the words of the Lord in the, in the Ten Commandments, of course. Uh, we see the transfiguration, right? The, the disciples there uh, seeing the, the light, uh, and, and there they too trembled, right? So in the holiness of God, because God is holy, he's without sin, um, we have no place in his holiness when it's up to us. Like, we can't just be <laughs> in his holiness, in our sin, with our own merits. In the Old Testament, uh, if, you, if you want, uh, Isaiah, when he has the specific vision, he, sa he, says, uh, he says, I saw the Lord, he was high and lifted up. Yeah. And he said, I, I am a man undone. He's, he's in a uh, dream or a trance, uh, a vision. Yeah. Is that what the angels came with the coal off the yes. altar and put on the surface? Yeah, right. That's right. Good. Good. Um, oh, by the way, Janelle loves a phone call. She's like, yeah, have people call me, have people visit. Okay. I'm all for it. So if you can call her, uh, she would be tickled. She's still home or is she? She's at home. Okay. She will be at home until, until whenever that time is. But, but they're coming to her. Okay. Good for them. You always got to be in your casa, you know? You got to be in your home all the time. So, uh, yeah, call her. She'd love to hear from you, by the way. She's always welcome. And, you know, she's, she's Janelle, still Janelle, just great. Anyways, um, all right. Uh, so there is uh, this uh, trembling. Uh, verse 22, verse 22. All right. So, but, so this is that switch, that shift from you're not on that, but now you're uh, in the city of God, uh, Mount Zion. Again, this is the hill surrounding Jerusalem. Many would call Mount Zion a synonymous to Jerusalem, uh, going back to, as you look at your notes, uh, the time where uh, King David would uh, overcome uh, the, the Jebusites who had a stronghold um, of this area. Uh, but there, um, after his conquest, um, there, uh, this would be the city of David, the city of God. Second Samuel is your referent there. Um, but it is this place where the angels are present, where they have this festival, this celebration, this gathering, uh, as they worship the one true God, right? But you have come. So 18, for you have not come. Verse uh, 22, but you have come. This is your, uh, this is your uh, ultimately, the presence of God. Right? That's what this picture is. That spiritual heavenly place to which uh, you are joined with God. By what? By the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. You are holy. How? By the blood that covers you and forgives you of all your sins. Right? And no longer are you trembling, but as we see in uh, verse well, that's the next verse. Anyways, um, so, so here we see that picture of the, the shift. And because of uh, where God has gathered you, uh, there you live your life of faith um, in what he has given to you in Jesus Christ. That is how you run the race. That is the word that you need to hear all the time, the words of Christ. Right? Your being is rooted not in your works. Your being is rooted in the one who worked for you by your merits. And through that, of course, in your being, you, you love and serve. But it's in that being of the sacrifice of Christ where there you proceed in the gospel. Very important that the gospel is the, always the core to your faith. And that's a word that you will hear to the end of time. Right? Um, yeah, that's why you're here, Sunday after Sunday. Right? Because we... We need to hear Jesus and what he's done. I don't know about you, but I need to hear it all the time. My kids can attest to that, that I need to hear that all the time. Don't ask. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, uh, I need to hear that all the time, the works of Christ uh, and what he has done for me and you. So uh, very, very important. Um, why don't we do um, one more? Verse 23. Oh, I love this verse, right? I mean, who are the firstborn? 
Who are the firstborn? Now, we see that from uh, the book of Colossians right there, right? In your notes. Don't you love the font, by the way? It's so great. It's so glorious. It's like 14 font on our notes. Yeah. I could see clear. Anyways, and, <laughs> and he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And this is Jesus, right? But as we talk about the firstborn of the dead, what about you? When we talk about the firstborn, that is Christ. Now, who loves a half good marker? I, it drives me nuts. It drives me, but I don't want to waste it. You know, there's more ink to be had. But anyways, uh, uh, that's right. But how are you? Ooh, pink. <laughs> you know, I the simple pleasures of life. Trust me, I'm a very corporate. I'm a very simple guy. You'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> um, but how are you, when we talk about firstborn of Christ, as Christ is the firstborn, how are you incorporated into Christ? Like I'm with Christ, or I'm with Christ, Christ is in me. Through baptism. Is baptism your work? Is, is baptism your work? No. Why? And I don't know. I always repeat myself, as you know. I have a short memory, so it's good. Um, so why is, if baptism is your work, uh, what happens to this verse, if baptism is your work? If it's your work, it means Nancy did something to incorporate herself into Christ. Basically, she puts her, she's on the other side of the mountain where there the law is doing what? It, it's in, in the presence of God in our sin, sinfulness. There we are terrified by our own sin. We just have to do better. We have to do more to fill that pious cup, right? But rather, when we know that the work of Christ, it, it is his work in the water and word of holy baptism, and we are by his grace incorporated in his name, this text it says, who are enrolled in heaven. School is coming up, right? Enrollment, right? I mean, think about it. Um, what if you went to school and they were taking attendance and they were going, um, Dave Bovey, Brent Romney, Robin Mega Phillips, Patrick Rawlings, and Chris was saying, wait, Hey, where, where's my name? <laughs> right? uh, you, you skip my name. Oh, your name is not on this list, right? How? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are, all of you are, and how are you sure? By what has been done for you, by his grace. You are enrolled, incorporated. The one who was raised as a firstborn, this is Romans 6, right? Where do we say Romans 6? At every funeral. Because there we are comforted by what? By how we are incorporated into Christ, all by the power in the water and word of holy baptism. Free gift. From flowing from his death and resurrection, there he institutes uh, the gift of baptism, and there we are connected to him. Enrolled. I love being enrolled. Well, it depends on what class. But when it comes to salvation, I mean, this is, this is the list, and you're on it. And your name is written by the blood of Christ. And you are enrolled. And you are going to be raised. And that's the comfort in this life of salvation. This is the side of the mountain you're on, right? The one who is the all-encompassing mediator, Jesus Christ, who has delivered you over from the domain of darkness to his marvelous light. And this is what the writer is showing us. This is the race you're running. Enrolled. Not, can I get on that enrollment sheet, but rather, I'm already there. This is the race I'm running with my eyes on the one who's fulfilled all things. It's all been answered for. All done. Done. All done. Finished. At peace. Complete. Complete. As my dad would say, perfecto. Perfecto. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and that's so true, right? Uh, and that's why all is well through all things, because we're on this side of the mountain. Make sense? Um, 
Yeah, go tell it on the mountain. Um, Wales love that song. Uh, but to any, anyways, so uh, again, as we look at, I'm not done here with this because there's so much here. Who are enrolled in, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And just as a, you know, what we talk about the work of Christ and his righteousness. Um, what is the greatest? Our guilt is what? It can be very heavy. Like, you can hear the words of Christ and say, I know I'm forgiven, or, Pastor, you say all these words about forgiveness and what he has done for each and every, but I don't know, Pastor, I don't know about me. You don't know what I've done in my life. You don't know all the darkness in my life, and I don't think God forgives me of my sin, because I'm so guilty, and I, I don't know. It's just too much for him to bear, right? But when you think about and dwell upon the depth of his righteousness, his righteousness is, is pure and holy, and by his very work on the cross, he charges, uh, he, he charges to you his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And he well, bears he your... Gives us the answer for that. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. That's right. That's right. And, and this is the picture of righteousness, is the, the blood of Christ that covers you. And you are perfect and made holy um, all by what God has done. Right? And, and this is the side of the mountain to which you live right now. And that is the pilgrimage of faith. Uh, that is the word that you need to hear. So, so right here, uh, and then at the end of the day, um, the spirits of righteousness right there, you are made perfect. Um, you are perfect. But pastor, I'm a sinner. Oh, I know. But you are, perf you are perfected by uh, the, the word of Christ and what he has done for you um, in his death and resurrection, in, in how he incorporates you in your baptism and in the supper that you feed upon the bread from heaven, right? So again, as you, as you look at these uh, uh, mountains, oh, you can look on, oh, that's right. Um, if you have the Lutheran Study Bible, the, uh, on the other side it says the tale of two mountains. So yeah, I didn't see that. I should have read that before. I did. Anyways, um, uh, but yeah, on this side of the mountain, uh, this is the picture of perfection, and that is what you have been given. So when you're running the race, how you run the race is shaped by what? It's shaped by where your faith trusts. Does that make sense? If your faith trusts in legalism, right, works to make yourself righteous, you're running the race, race. to make yourself righteous. Oh, I hate rats. Anyways, but I like the race. I just don't like rats. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you're running the race, uh, as you hear this word of Christ, knowing that you're on this side of the mountain, righteous by his work, that race is vastly different. Do, do you see the difference between that? It's tiring. One is tiring, and one can be tiring too, but there is joy in Christ. There are still moments, but yet at the end of the day, there is comfort and peace. It, it, There's no rest the other way. You know what I mean? You don't have when you're doing it by your own works. You know what I mean? You just never seem to progress. It's constant, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to, you know, there's no rest of it. Your focus is the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, as I talk to my fellow Christians that I know, let's say, uh, that I know of, uh, they're more of a different taste of Christianity, um, I just noticed a lot of things they say a lot of times. It's a lot of about what I, what I do. And I say that's great. But then I'm always, oh, well, it's Jesus. It's, it's all about Jesus. It's always about Jesus. And, and I think that's the key, you guys, is that on this side of the mountain, for you, it is Jesus. And, and this is um, so important as a writer, it really unfolds this for us. We see the tale of two mountains and how one is trembling, one is set free and at peace. And this is where you're at right now. Right now. Um, so remember that this day. I know we're a little bit far, but... Uh, uh, hopefully that won't well with you. Why don't we uh, close? Oh, yes. Just real quick, I'm loving, once again, I love the cross, <coughs> and I'm loving that I am sitting at the, at the base of the cross, covered by the tree of life, covered by Christ's perfect work for me, always, always at peace because his work is perfect for me, and that has covered me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
We'll leave this up all year. Yeah, I'm on the floor. <laughs> Hopefully our theme is the same next year. That'd be nice. My idea for next year is Gilligan's Island. Uh, I saw a video on YouTube that um, shows that the uh, characters in, in, um, on Gilligan's Island represent all seven of the deadly sins. Oh. Um, Mrs. Hmm. Hell's always eating. She's gluttony. Oh. And um, Gilligan is um, sloth. I just, I just don't, I don't know if, because I, at VBS I talked about uh, there's no crying in baseball, and uh, uh, some, uh, the kids were like, the kids were like this, I don't think they'll get, Gilligan's even before League of Their Own, so uh, anyways, but uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, why don't we close uh, with a word. Daily Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for delivering us, uh, for giving, giving us the greatest gift of, uh, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, bless us this day. Bless us this week as we uh, continue on on this side of the mountain, knowing full well that uh, by, your, by your work you have reconciled us to you. Bless and keep us and grant us your peace this day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.